Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next tutorial in the Coding Geometry Dash in Java series. So in the last tutorial, what we got to was we are now able to place this little picture just all over the screen. Uh, we can place down here too, which isn't good. Uh, we won't be fixing that yet, but we will be adding the ability to place new objects. So this is what we will be at by the time we finish where you can select one and then you can change your selection based on whichever button is currently pressed. So this is what we're going to be going to do today. Uh, before we start doing this, I just want to go over some just like I the theory behind it before we actually start coding it so that we know we understand how it works. So let's check that out real quick and see how this will work. So as you guys were able to see in that little preview, what we have is we basically have these buttons and they each have a picture attached to it. And when the user clicks on one of these buttons, it gets attached to the mouse cursor and then they are able to place it in the scene. So the way this works is really intuitive. I'm sure you guys could guess. Uh, basically, we just have uh, the width of this button and we have the height of this button. We also have the X and the Y of the button. And then how do we check if it's pressed? Well, we just check and see if the mouse button, the click is contained within this X plus width the X to the X plus width range and the Y to the Y plus height range. So if the mouse is contained between both of these, if the mouse is X and the mouse is Y is contained within both of these, then we know that we press the button. And then we simply copy this button to the mouse and then the mouse now has that button. It's a little bit more complicated because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna have a container that looks like this. This is invisible to the user, but the container will consist of uh, 12 buttons. I think it's 12. So we basically have a couple of rows. And so then this container is in charge of updating the buttons, each button, and then it's also in charge of drawing each button. And then we basically use this container to determine, you know, is the mouse inside this container? And then we use the container to tell, uh, to organize the buttons and stuff too, because eventually what we're going to have is we're going to be adding tabs. And so then this container is going to be in charge of tracking which buttons are attached to which tabs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why it gets a little bit more complicated, but this container will have each of these different menu items. So this menu will, this container will have these buttons, uh, which we will call menu items. And so each menu item will consist of the button and the image that it contains. And then eventually we'll also be attaching all the box bounds and triangle bounds, whatever we need to attach to these because we're literally just going to copy this button to the mouse cursor and then the mouse cursor will have that button attached to it and then we can just copy and paste that everywhere around our screen. So that's sort of the basic theory. Let's actually start coding it and see how this works. One of the first things that we'll wanna be doing is going into our project directory and then we will be adding a new package. So we'll go into here and we'll say a new package and we're gonna call this UI because this is gonna contain just all the UI stuff that we have. And then within this package, we're going to create a few new classes. So we will create one class called main container. And I'm going to add this to Git, which you should also be following this along on Git. I'll do a tutorial on that in the future, just sort of some good things to do with Git, because it's really helpful if you accidentally mess up your project or something, which I've done and Git has saved my life. So then we'll add another class called menu item. And so the menu item is each of the components that is attached to this main container. Each of these classes is going to extend component. So we'll say extends component, and then we will import this class. And it's gonna say that we don't have these methods. So I'm gonna implement this. And then we're gonna do a few more, uh, just starter methods. So we'll say main container, the constructor. And then we're also going to have at override public void update, double delta time, and then we are also going to have the draw method. So at override public void draw graphics 2D G2, and we have the draw method. Then we'll go to menu item and basically do exactly the same thing. So extends component, and then we're going to import that. And then we're going to say implement that method. And you'll see too, a lot of this will end up happening as you create something uh, like this game engine. If you notice in Unity, if you're ever using that, uh, it has this function where every time you create a new script, it sort of comes with these methods automatically, which is really nice because 
you end up needing these methods in every single type of script and everything that you're creating. And I'm going to copy this and paste this. And it would be nice if we figured out a way how to do that too. I don't know yet. That's like a full game engine feature that we don't really have time to do right now. So we have the update, the copy, and the draw methods for both of these. Next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to add a new method. And it's going to look like this. Uh, it's going to go override public void start. And this is a lot like Unity 2. And this is going to be helpful for us because we're actually going to need to do something uh, after it's constructed, but before we start updating. So if you know Unity or Unreal, they have these methods called start, which is basically this is called after the whole game object is constructed and it has all of its components attached to it and everything. And then you can uh, call stuff like within here game object dot get component. And you don't have to worry about was that component already added or was it not added? And it's actually really easy for us to implement too. If we go into our game object class, uh, let's find that real quick. We will just add a method in here first. Uh, we're going to need this method called public void get all components so that we can run through every single one of the components and return those. And this isn't void. This is actually going to return a list of components. And then this will simply return, oops, return this dot components. Then we're going to go into our scene class. So right here. And basically what we're going to do is right after you add the game object, we will call start on it. So we'll say for component C and G dot get all components C dot start. And in order to call that method, we need to go to our component class and add one more method public void start. And that is just empty for now. And also, uh, one of the things I was wondering about, you know, is doing it this way. So basically, if we don't override these, these ju are just functions that do nothing. And you might be worried that that provides a lot of bad overhead. Like it'll it'll be calling these functions and going into them and doing unnecessary tasks that it doesn't need to do. Well, we might not have to worry about it. You would need a uh, profiler to know for sure. But I'm pretty sure the Java compiler, I looked around on Stack Overflow and everything. And basically the Java compiler, if it sees stuff like this, it will just remove it completely so that it doesn't waste the unnecessary time uh, calling a void function. So we should be good. If it starts slowing down or something, you should profile your code and see where the bottlenecking is. And if it is this, then we could come up with a new solution. But for me, this worked fine. So now we have this uh, component. Uh, we have this start method. And if we go back to our menu item, this is now fine. And then one other task, sort of like uh, just maintenance thing that we have to do is we have to go into our sprite class in order for this to work. And this is something that I've been meaning to do too, because it is important. Uh, right now we have no notion of whether a sprite is a sub sprite or not. What I mean by that is whether the sprite is just its own image or whether it's part of a larger sprite sheet. And that's kind of important because we do have to know if it's a, a sub sprite or not for things like serialization and everything. And then also just for things like what we're about to do with copying components and all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this Boolean called is sub sprite and we're going to initialize that to false because we're going to assume that all sprites are not sub sprites. And then we're going to also add a row and column and index so that if it is a sub sprite, we know which row, which column and which index this sub sprite is located at. Then what I'm going to do is if we're copying this, then we know that this is not a sub sprite. So we don't have to worry about that. But then if we want to create a sub sprite, then we will have it will take in a buffered image, the image, and it will also take in a row, a column, and an index, which are all the things that we added up there. And we'll just say this dot image equals image, this dot width equals image dot get width, this dot height equals image dot get height. And then this dot row equals row, this dot column equals column, and this dot index equals index. So we basically just initialize that. And then, oh, we also have to add into this dot is sub sprite equals true. We know it's a sub sprite because they're passing in the row, the column, and the index. So then down here, we're going to go into our copy because if it is not a sub sprite, we do want to return the constructor with just this basic return new sprite this dot image. Otherwise, we want to make sure that it returns as a sub sprite. So we'll say return a new sprite. And then we'll say this dot image, this dot row, this dot column, and this dot index. There we go. And that should take care of that. So now we have a way to tell whether we are 
dealing with a sprite, which is just one big image, or with a subsprite, which is part of a larger sprite sheet. So then with this task keeping all out of the way, we will now go into our sprite sheet class and then just fix this up real quick because right now, uh, whenever it's creating the sprites, it just passes in the image. So we'll go into here, whoops, and then we will go comma, and then we will also add in the row, the column, and the index, which is the count in this for loop. So we have the row because we are counting through the rows, we are counting through the columns, and then the count is whatever the index is. So that should be good. Now we know whether we're dealing with a sub sprite or a sprite, which you'll see why it's important in just a moment. So next, let's go to our menu item class that we just created. Inside of the menu item, we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need the X and the Y, the width and the height, and we're also going to need the images for uh, when it's not hovered, which I'm just gonna call button sprite, and when it is, whoops, hovered, which I'm gonna just call hover sprite. And then we're gonna keep all these stored, whoops, inside here. So I'm just gonna say int x, y, width, and height. And then we will say sprite, button sprite, and hover sprite. And then we will just assign all these inside this constructor. So this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, this dot width equals width, and this dot height equals height, this dot button sprite equals button sprite, and this dot hover sprite equals hover sprite. And so this is for, uh, I'm going to pull this up again. If you see right now, these are all just sort of a faded gray, but then if I click on it, it gets darker. And so the button sprite is when it's light, and then the hover sprite is for when it is dark. And so we'll be able to just use that as the state to control uh, which form it's in. We're also going to need one more sprite, which is the image attached to it. So I'm going to just call this, uh, I'll call it my image because this is this menu items image. So if I go back to that example one more time, notice how each of these has the little, uh, the image. So like my mouse changes to the image on the button. And that is what my image will be. We can't do that in here because uh, think about it. So we have this game object and we want to get the image that's attached to it. Well, what image is attached to it? We don't know yet because when we're creating this, we have no idea what the game object contains. And we'll see that too in just a second once we actually start to create it. I'll wait for that until we can actually see the full process of how that's going to work. But what we're going to do next is we are going to do the update method. So basically what the update method is, is exactly what I was saying earlier. We're just going to say if the window.window.mouselistener.x is greater than this.x and window.getWindow.mouselistener.x is less than or equal to this dot x plus this dot width. And I'm running off the screen a little bit. That's fine. I'll say and, and then space down to here. Window dot get window dot mouse listener dot y is greater than this dot y and window dot get window dot mouse listener dot y is less than or equal to this dot y plus this dot height. So this means that the mouse is within the bounds of this little rectangle. And then what we're going to want to check is, did they click on it? So if the Windows mouse listener says that the mouse was pressed and the Windows mouse listener says that the mouse button was the mouse event dot button one, which is just the, uh, whoops, the left button click. So if they clicked and it was the left button click, and then I'm gonna just move this to a new line too, then we know that they have clicked within the button. So we can say they have clicked inside the button. And then we'll just print out clicked for now. Of course, we can't see anything yet because we still have no way to test this. Uh, so that's good. And then we're gonna draw this very simply for now. We're not gonna worry about my image. We might in just a second, but Basically, to draw this, we will just draw the button image first. So we'll say this dot button sprite dot image, and then at this dot x, this dot y, this dot width, and this dot height. There we go. And then null image observer. Then we'll draw my image. So the image that will be attached to this. And so we'll say just my image dot image, and then we'll just say this dot x, this dot y this dot width and this dot height. For, well, not this dot width and this dot height because the image will actually be a little bit smaller 
than the overall button. So we'll say my image is width and my image is height. And then we'll say if this is selected, which is a field we will add in just a second, then we will also draw the hover image. So hover image dot image and then this dot x, this dot y, this dot width, and this dot height. And so for the hover hover image, I basically just have a semi-transparent image which is why we can draw over everything without worrying about it covering every, anything up. So then we'll just add in a Boolean variable is selected and we'll actually make this public too because we will be needing this in a little bit. So then is selected, we will default to false. And then if we're inside here is selected equals true because they have just clicked it, clicked on it. <laughs> and then let's add one more little optimization. So right now we're checking it every single frame but we can just say if it's not selected because if it's already selected then we don't really care about doing checking to see if we need to click on it again because it's already selected so that's menu item that's basically what we want to do inside here we're going to do a little bit more in a second but before we get to that i do want to get onto the main container and sort of see how this is going to work so before we continue anymore let's first get the appropriate assets so i'm just going to copy mine uh, there will be a link in the description so that you guys can get these. We'll just go into our assets folder and then I'm going to first change the name of this to ground sprites because that's a little bit more aptly named. These are just the sprites that look like this. And then I'm also going to drag in this one and this will be available in the download link. This is just the button sprites. And like I said, so this is just the big buttons that will the little hover semi transparent thing and then the actual button. So add those into your assets folder right now because we will need those in a second too. Then in our main container, what we're gonna wanna do is first, we're going to have a list of game objects. So we'll say list of game object and we'll call these our menu items. So this is basically gonna be every single one of those buttons on the screen. And then inside of here, we'll say this dot menu items equals a new array list. And then we will call an init function so we'll just create an init function here, public void init. And then inside of here, we will load up the sprite sheets we need. So first of all, we need the ground sprites. So we'll say sprite sheet ground sprites equals a new sprite sheet. And this is located at assets slash ground sprites dot PNG. And then we need the width, which is 42, height 42, spacing is two. I believe there are six columns and 12 is the size. So see if that's right. And then you can just copy this if you need to. And then sprite sheet, and this will be the button sprites. So the two images, and then we'll say this is a new sprite sheet. And we will say assets slash button sprites dot PNG. And then this tile width is 60 by 60. And then there's two in the spacing and then two columns and the size is two. Let me just double check on that. So that's correct too. And then we will go down here and we will say for integer i equals zero until i is less than the ground sprites dot sprites dot size i plus plus. So we're gonna loop through each of the ground sprites and we are basically going to create a game object with a menu item contain menu item component that represents that sprite. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the current sprite we're on. So current sprite is the ground sprites dot sprites dot get i so this is the sprite that we are currently on and then the x and the y so what is the x and the y on the screen if we take a look one more time we notice that they're all uniformly spaced and in a column and grid layout and we have one two three four five six so six in each one we're going to set up some constants first and then we will use these constants to figure all this stuff out so we will say public static final integer and this will be the button offset in the x direction. We'll initialize that to zero. Public static final integer button offset in the y direction. Initialize that to zero. Public static final integer button spacing horizontal. Initialize that to zero. Public static final integer button spacing vertically. So how much space is in between each button vertically and horizontally. Initialize all those to zero. And then we'll have a couple more. So this will just be the integer button width, which is 60. 
and the public static final integer button height, which is also 60. So those should be all the constants we need. We'll go back to the menu con main container. And then inside of here, how do we figure out where the X is and where the Y is on the screen? Well, we just add the offset, which is this uh, big gap from the left and the right, which is just this big gap right here between the left and the right of the uh, buttons. And then the offset in the Y direction is this. So we're going to add that initially. And then we basically want to add in. So which uh, button are we on? So if we're on the first one, we add zero. Then second one, we add the spacing and this width. And then third one, we add two times the space because we have two spaces. And then we add two button widths and so on and so forth. And then the same thing with the vertical. So it's just a little bit of basic math, but we can say integer x equals constants dot button offset x. So we add in that offset first. Then we say plus the current sprite dot column. So which column are we on times the constants dot the button width because that's how big the button width is plus. And then we will also add in the current sprite dot column times the constants dot the button spacing in the horizontal direction. So basically we're just adding in how many buttons are before this and how many spaces are before this. And then the Y is basically the same thing. So we'll just say constants dot button offset in the Y direction plus the current sprite dot the row since we're going row wise now and then constants dot button height plus and then we'll say current sprite dot row times constants dot button. Whoops, spell that right. Constants dot button spacing in the vertical direction. And we will uh, tweak all those in a little bit once we get around to that part. And so this should give us the correct X and Y directions. Then we'll basically say, so now we want to create the actual object. So we'll say game object OBJ equals a new game object. And we'll just call this generated. And then we will give it the transform, which is the new vector two of the X and the Y that we just created for this thing. Next, what we're gonna say is we're gonna add in the component. We want to say the current sprite dot copy so we're going to copy the sprite so that it has the sprite attached to it. And then we are also going to say menu item, menu item equals a new menu item. And we need to pass it the X and the Y and the width and the height, which is going to be constant, whoops, which is going to be constants dot button width and constants dot, if I can spell this right, dot button height. And then we also need in the button sprite and the hover sprite, which is just going to be button sprites dot sprite dot get zero and button sprites dot sprite dot get one. So just the first and the second image. If you remember, let's look at this real quick. The button sprites are just these two. And so we just, the first one is the non hovering image. And then the second one is the hovering image. So now we have the menu item and then we want to add this to our object. So we'll say object .add component, and then we'll say menu item. And then we'll just simply say menu items dot add object. So we add the object to the menu items. So then next thing we're going to want to do is we'll just add in a little method called start. And this is basically just going to call start because these aren't going to actually be part of the scene. These are going to be sort of separate since all UI components are actually separate. So we'll say for game object G and the menu items and then for component C and the G dot get all components C dot start. So we're basically just sort of going to manually call start on all these components uh, since we can't do it through our scene hierarchy that we already have. And then update is really simple. We'll just say for game object G and game object and this dot menu items. We'll just call G dot update. And then draw is also really simple because we'll just say for game object G and this dot menu items G dot draw G2. So that's all pretty simple. We don't have to worry about copy. We can just leave that as null because we never will have a reason to copy this. Okay, so this is basically the groundwork. We should be able to start testing this in just a minute. So let's go to our level editor scene. And then up here we will have a main container. We'll say this is a new whoops, 
main, or we'll call this editing buttons because that's what they are. And then this is a new main container. So that should be good there. And then inside of init, we will call main container dot start. So we'll just go up to here. And then after we initialize these two things, we'll just say main container or editing buttons dot start. And then we'll go down to our update and we will say right after the grid, but before the mouse cursor, editing buttons dot update delta time. And right down here, we'll say editing buttons dot draw g2. It is important you do it before the mouse cursor because we do want to draw that mouse cursor on top of everything. So mouse cursor should be drawn last because we want that to be shown before everything. And then one more thing that we're going to have to do is if we go up here, we are calling this uh, for the sprite sheet and we don't want that to happen. And I might actually have to. Okay, yeah, we changed that to ground sprites. So we want to remove this completely. I'm just going to delete this. Whoops. And so we'll go here, delete that <laughs> with pressing Z. And then we're going to get rid of this one too. And we're actually going to just have the mouse cursor be initialized with no button instead of the like the last tutorial where we were just adding button initially. So let's run this, see what happens. We get an error. And the error says, we have never initialized my image. So that was what I was talking about. Basically what we have going on is if we go to our main container, uh, then we notice that as we're creating this, um, so if we look at this, we have the game object, we create the game object, then we add the sprite, then we add the menu item, but the menu item isn't attached to the game object yet because the menu item gets attached here. So that's why we need this start because we need to be able to call, uh, say my image, equals and then we'll say um, game object dot get component sprite dot class because we can't call it within the constructor because unfortunately it's not attached to the game object until it's finished constructing so we need this sort of in between phase where we can call get component on the game object uh, where the game object is fully constructed has all its components attached this is attached to the game object and then we can add in this my image so let's try this one more time and there we go. We see that they're all up here. And if we click it, we notice it says click down here and then it also turns the image to a darker color. So that's cool, but it's not attaching to the mouse cursor. How do we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. If we go to our level editor scene, we have this mouse cursor. Let's just make it public. And it is simply a game object. And then I'm also going to go over here. If you just hover and then click make private, because technically all of these can be private. And then I'm going to leave the player as public because we will need him to be public in a little bit. But so we have this and then let's go. We have mouse cursor is just a new game object. We have this snap to grid component. We want to preserve that. So if we go into our menu item class, when the player clicks on it, all we have to do is copy this game object to the uh, mouse cursor. But we do we don't want to retain this component. So we don't want to keep component on it or uh, the menu item component on it. And then we also want to preserve the snap to grid component on the mouse cursor. So uh, what I mean is basically, we'll just say game object uh, obj equals, and then we'll say game object dot copy. So we're copying this game object. Then we're gonna say obj dot remove component. And then we're gonna say menu item dot class because we don't wanna keep this component on it when it's in the game. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, scene level editor scene scene equals, and then we're going to say window dot get window dot get current scene. And we're going to have to cast this to a level editor scene. So we'll just go up to here and we'll say level editor scene. That should be all good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, snap to grid, snap to grid equals scene dot cursor dot mouse cursor dot get component snap to grid dot class so that we preserve this. And then we'll say obj .add component snap to grid. And then we'll just simply say scene dot mouse cursor equals this obj. So basically we just sort of swap things around. We said, okay, let's copy this game object. Then we said, we don't want to keep the menu item class, but we do want to keep the snap to grid. So we removed the menu item. Then we added the snap to grid. And now we just say, okay, now we can just make the mouse cursor this object, which should be good.
So now if we go back to our game and we click on it, you notice you get it and it works properly. So now we're placing things and if we click it to change it, so we click a different one, it's also working. This is kind of weird though. If you notice, these are going and we'll fix that and stuff too. Because right now when we click on it, it places an object because we're clicking on it. Uh, because that's what we want to happen when it click. And since we don't have any way to check and see if we're clicking on a button or the screen, it just automatically adds it. So let's fix the spacing and stuff real quick. I have some values that we can use for the constants that will work really well. If you've been following along with all the different values that I've been using throughout this tutorial. So for the button offset in the X direction, we will use 400 and the Y direction, we will use 560. Uh, for the horizontal, we will use 10. And then for the vertical spacing, we will use five. So we run this one more time and it looks much nicer, but we still have this problem where if it clicks down here, then it also adds it into the game scene. We can fix that really easily by saying if we're below this line, this imaginary line, which is the top of the buttons, then don't place it when you click. So if we go into our snap to grid component, this is what's placing the objects into the screen. And so we, we right now we're just saying, just add it if we can. So I'm going to go down here and then do this. And I'm going to move these back a little bit too. And then we'll just say if the window dot get window dot mouse listener dot y is less than constants dot button offset y and and then we say and all the rest of the stuff so then if we run this one more time if we click down here it does not place an object yep okay so now we have a way to select which object we're doing and place it on the screen that's all great so we've completed this tutorial what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is probably starting on serialization and that's the process of we have these objects being placed in the world but if i exit out and then restart the game, they're not there because we have no save data. So we want to create a system where we can save the whole game world and then load that game world back in uh, by loading a file. So that will be really heavy on parsing and writing document files and everything. I'm excited for that. I hope you guys are too. I'll see you guys in that next tutorial. Thanks.